If you've got a solar PV array installed, or you're thinking of installing one, you should also get an energy diverter like an eddy. In this video, I'll explain the benefits of an eddy, and I'll show you how it works, how to monitor it, and how to control it, insofar as you need to. The main benefit of the eddy is that it uses surplus energy. Let's look at what that means. So let's say this is your house and there's the solar PV array giving you lots of lovely solar power to use. Maybe you'll be self-sufficient, but there's a pretty good chance you will also need to be drawing power from the grid. There will be times as well when you are not using as much as you are generating. So you'll be sending power to the grid and this is called surplus energy, self-generated surplus energy. And the eddy gets in the way of this surplus energy and directs it to the immersion heater in your hot water tank and heats up your water for you with electricity you would otherwise have been more or less throwing away. When the maximum temperature is reached, the eddy will keep monitoring the tank, but otherwise then start feeding that surplus power back to the grid again. There'll be times as well when you're not generating enough fuel to use and you'll be drawing power from the grid. In this instance, the eddy is sitting waiting for surplus until it comes back into use again. Put simply, EDI is a device that channels surplus electricity to your immersion heater, giving you hot water for free. EDI needs to know if you're generating surplus power, and it gets this information from a current transformer, or CT clamp, which has to be installed in the white electricity meter box outside your house. Now, the clamp will be fitted to the cable connecting your electrical network to the grid, the meter tails, as your electrician might say, this current transformer detects how much power is flowing and in what direction. In other words, it can tell whether you're drawing power from the grid or if you're sending surplus power to it. And if you're sending surplus power, it can also tell how much you're sending and it relays this information down a wire to your eddy. You can see the wire there, it's the grey one wrapped around the brown cable. It's a bit like an ethernet cable. The genius of the eddy is that it uses this information and it takes whatever surplus power you're generating and diverts it to your immersion heater. If you only have a small surplus, it will heat the water up slowly. But if you have a larger surplus, it will take up to three kilowatts, the maximum power of the heater. The net result is hot water for free, um, unless you count the capital cost of all this kit, of course. So, do you still need a boiler or heat pump? Depending on the variables of how much surplus you produce and how much hot water you use, you won't need to use your boiler or your air source heat pump to heat your domestic hot water. In the shorter days of winter, or with heavy family usage, you will inevitably have to draw some power from the grid. However, in summer, when the sun is up before you are, then even if you've used all your hot water the night before, there's a pretty good chance you'll have what you need for your morning shower. How hot does the water get? Well, that's not determined by the eddy. Uh, that's determined by the thermostat in the immersion heater. All the eddy does is tell the immersion heater to start heating the water up and to stop when it's up to temperature. Simply is the key word here. The eddy simply takes all your surplus self-generated electricity and uses it to heat your water. And once it's all set up, there's nothing more that you need to do. You can just let the eddy get on with it. Incidentally, the unit doesn't generate any heat itself, and it's also silent, which means you can install it pretty much anywhere you want in your house. So hot water from surplus solar energy is what I expect from my eddy, but how do I monitor what it's doing? The eddy has three principal operating modes. The first of these is waiting for surplus which means that if anything is being generated by your solar PV array, it's all being used by the house. The second mode is heating, which is exactly what it says. And so you've got surplus energy being directed to the eddy and the water is heating up. And the third mode is maximum temperature reached, which uh, means what it says on the can, really. Um, it means that the water's up to temperature and if there is now any surplus generated, it's being sent back to the grid. The operating mode is displayed on the screen of the eddy. It's up here. Uh, now my eddy is up in my loft and that's not desperately uh, convenient for monitoring, but happily I can do that also via the My Energy app. Here on the main screen of the My Energy app, 
you can see green energy represented by the green leaf in the center. And looking at the icon on the bottom right of the screen, you can also see a trickle, 0.3 kilowatts, of surplus self-generated energy going to the eddy. If I tap on the eddy icon, you can then see some more detail relating to the eddy. Top left, you can see that its current operating mode is heating. And um, I have to say I was initially confused by the presence of a tank 2 as well as a tank 1. Um, eddy could be connected to two separate tanks, but I only have one, which is why tank 1 has priority. If I tap on tank 1, you can now see the temperature of the water in that tank. And you can also see that there's an option to boost, and I can set how long that boost will be for. And that's if I needed to top up the water um, immediately. And in this case, if I do, if I do give it a boost, Eddie will supply the immersion heater with the maximum amount, three kilowatts, regardless of whether all of that is uh, surplus energy or not. So it's just a quick solution to get hot water into the tank if you need it. So monitoring is really easy, especially with the app. And control, well, as I've already said, and the eddy will um, get on with things by itself. So there's no need for um, manual intervention um, unless you want that boost. Uh, there is something you ought to know, which is that underneath the eddy, the bottom, there's a three-way switch, uh, which is it's on at the moment for me, as it uh, always has been. I can also switch it to off which will um, kill the electricity supply to both the eddy and the immersion heater, or bypass, in which case the eddy will be turned off, but there will still be power to the immersion heater. It's important to know about priority, because besides heating hot water with solar power, you might also want to charge the battery of your electric car. MyEnergy make a car charger called a Zappi, which is also accessible via the app. And so the question becomes, if you've got surplus uh, power being generated, where should it go? To the eddy or to the zappy? And you can choose, and it's quite simple on the app. You can do it on the machines themselves, on the, uh, the screens on the front of the boxes, but it's so much easier to do it on the app. You just tap on the icon and move it around to select it to be top priority or second priority. My advice here would be to set the zappy as priority one, because if your car's not plugged in, then it's going to, any surplus power is going to go to the eddy anyway. Um, if you're only getting uh, a little bit of power, then you're going to need that to go to the eddy because the car won't be able to, to use it. I'll come into that a bit more in the Zappy video. And if your car is plugged in, um, if you're anything like me, you would want that to have priority. So eddy gives you hot water for free from surplus energy you've generated. And once it's all installed, set up, and you've set the priority, there's nothing you need to do except let it get on with its work all by itself.